within me. Oh, bless his blessed holy name. The name of the Lord is so holy as. Yeah. that you've tuned in, we're glad that you're tuning in, that you're coming in, come right on in and be a part of this worship and word experience this evening here at A Better Life Ministry. That is within me, oh, bless his, bless his holy, bless his holy, yeah, yeah. Oh, we 
instructions to Joash and every instruction that he gave to Joash in 2 Kings chapter 13 about verses 15 through 18 Joash followed every instruction he told Joash to take some as it were bow and arrows the Bible said he took bow and arrows he says that uh, you should open up the window eastwardly Joash opened up the window he said, put your hands on the bow and arrow. Joash put his hands on the bow and arrow. He said, shoot. Joash shot. So every instruction that Elisha had given to Joash, the king of Israel at that time, Joash adhered to. He was obedient to the instruction. And then the man of God told Joash to strike the ground. And Joash struck the ground three times. The Bible says that the man of God was very furious and just filled with anger and frustration. He said, you should have smitten the ground five or six times. Why'd you stop at three? Which is to suggest that uh, God will give us ultimate victory. Well, the measure of victory is determined by the times that we strike, how many times we strike. And as you read the rest of that text in 2 Kings chapter 13, we understand that Joash did defeat Syria three times because the amount of strikes determined his amount of victory. And he did regain the cities and some possessions. But Elisha told him, if you would have struck it five or six, five is the number of grade, six is the number of man, if you would have struck it more times, you would have utterly consumed Syria, never to have to encounter with them again. 
And I want to say to somebody tonight, if you missed Sunday's message, go back and go back and get it from Sunday. It was a blessing. The Lord is launching you just as an arrow. At times, he gives us arrows to launch. Other times, we are as arrows in his hand, and he is launching us. There's something that Elisha said when Joash opened up the window eastwardly. He says, now this is the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, which is to say that before you and I can get to where we're headed, we've got to be released from. You know, the whole posture of a bow and arrow is a, has everything to do with the releasing and a launching and a going forth. And some of you are focused on your destiny and your future in terms of launching, but you've got to be free from some things. So Elisha gave clear instructions to Joash. And he put his hand on his hand. There's one shot at life, but several strikes. We only live life once, but there are several strikes in life that we have. And even as the sport, one sport says, uh, you're disqualified. Three strikes, you're out baseball. But there's another sport that says, you're qualified. The highest score, that of strikes in bowling. And I'll say to you that your life, my life, has been as what we've given ourselves to in the strike mode, the strike mode. Don't stop striking. Keep on striking because God has taken us as an arrow to arrows from one level to the next level. The part that I want to chime in on tonight is that Elisha gave Joash clear instructions, clear instructions. I couldn't even be upset with Joash when he only smoked the ground three times. There were no instructions to say how many times. It was as if that by that point, it was according to Joash's faith. And even it is according to your faith tonight. But there are clear instructions from the word of the Lord that I want to minister to you tonight. Clear instructions like point number one. We'll find our text tonight in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, uh, beginning at verse number 5. It tells the story of the Roman centurion that goes to Jesus, pleading with Jesus that he would heal his servant. And we want to take a look at the life and the faith of this Roman centurion tonight. In Matthew chapter 5, verse number 13, or actually Matthew chapter 8, excuse me, Matthew chapter 8, verse number 13. What did I give y'all? All right, there you go. Good stuff. Thank you, Bree. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. Let's read it for reading's sake. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness and shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you tonight for the reading of your word. Let your word minister to our hearts tonight that we might receive it and live by it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. Tonight, I want to use for a thought, line up with the word of God. Line up with the word of God. Again, if I had to piggyback from Sunday's message, Joash, he came into agreement, into alignment with the man of God's instruction. He did everything. When you read those verses, 2 Kings 13, 15 through 18, everything that Elisha said, Joash did. 
even down to smiting the ground without having, at that point, specific uh, amounts as to how many times he should strike. Because at that point, it was all up to him. And I want to say to you, even like this Roman centurion that went to Jesus, pleading that Jesus would come and heal his servant. And Jesus says, okay, I'm on my way. And uh, the Roman centurion said to Jesus, no, you don't, you don't have to leave from where you are. I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. You can just speak the word only. You can just speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And the Roman centurion, when he said this, caused Jesus to marvel and speak to those that were around him and say, I have not found this type of faith in Israel amongst those that should have exemplified this type of faith. In other words, I have not found where uh, anyone has, has pleaded of me to do anything for them by me speaking a word only. The Roman centurion says, I have servants. I'm a man of authority. I'm a man under authority. I have servants that when I tell them to go, they go. If I tell them to come, they come. And because I am a man of authority, I understand authority. And I understand you, Lord, to be a man of authority. You don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to move your hand. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. There were clear instructions given to Joash. And he did what Elisha said do. Wonder what would happen in your life if you would not just say amen to the word in the sense of agreeing, so let it be but if you actually lined up with the word, if you actually came into alignment with the word of God and the purpose and the calling for your existence, if you didn't just clap to it, if you didn't just shake your head to it, if you just didn't nod and emotionally feel good when you hear it, but what would happen if, if his will would actually be done on earth, in your life, in your home, in your business, in your family as it is in heaven. What difference would your life bear? What, what change would come about in your life and your environment if you were in complete alignment with the word of God, the word of God? The fact that, again, uh, the term or the title is given to this Roman soldier as a centurion. Uh, the prefix cent actually means 100 that he was over at least a band of 100 men. You know, we say in uh, the world that we live that it takes one to know one. He was a man of authority, so he recognized authority. And he says, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. May I submit to you tonight that there is a healing that will come forth in your life, in your family life, your children, your husband, your wife. Not because as we pray, we're sending God to our home. You know how we pray, Lord, go by the hospital, and touch the sick, go by the nursing home and deliver those that are there, go into the jail and those that are incarcerated. We're, we're always sending the Lord, sending the Lord, sending the Lord. How about we just line up with his word? like the Roman centurion was willing to do, where he invited not the Lord to his house, but the word of the Lord to his house. I believe as that we've been declaring in this season that this is the season of the open hand, uh, the palm, the, the number 20, 2020. Biblical numerology teach of us that 20 represents the palm, the open hand. The hand of God is open to us. Now open your hand back to him. And even tonight, say, Lord, I, I'm lining up with your word. I'm lining up with your word. There are questions that you have concerning your life. May I submit to you that there are answers to your questions in the word of God. Ask Siri for the verse. Ask, Google it. Look it up. I need to know about healing. The word of God has it. I need to know about money, finances. It's in the word of God. Having problems in my relationship, my marriage, is in the word of God. My friendships, 
it's in the word of God. Business is in the word of God. Oh, I need to forgive more. It's in the word of God. I want to know more about prayer and praise and worship. And it's all in the word of God. And you've got to give yourself to it. Give yourself to it. You know, in this day that we're living, we're hearing so many words, so many reports. I've talked about it. It's on our social media. It's, it's, it's on our favorite news channel. So much word, so much word coming. But may you tonight take a moment, and not only a moment to hear this word, but a moment to line up with the word of God. A moment to line up with the word of God. The Bible says at the end of this, uh, our reading tonight, verses 5 through 13, that Jesus said to the Roman centurion, go your way, because according to your faith, according to how you have believed, it shall be done for you. I'm going to tell you something. When you line up with the word of God, you begin to look strange to others who are not lining up with the word of God. Your vocabulary will begin to change. Your, your words, your language, your verbiage, your lingo will begin to change. Because you can't line up with the word of God and not spew, not speak, not declare the word of God. And you'll start to make declarations and you'll begin to speak uh, what seems to be Greek or foreign to others, a language that others don't understand. So understand that when you line up with the word of God, the commonality that you might seek for in a friend or seek for even in a household member may not be there all up at front or at once. Initially, it takes time because the word of God has you sometimes speaking things into existence before they actually appear. Yeah, Abraham knows about that in Romans chapter 4, calling those things that are not as though they are. When you line up with the word of God, you begin to speak in the midst of a confused situation with words of peace, and it can change that situation. You'll speak in the midst of sickness, words of healing. I mean, we're doing our very, very best during this time of pandemic to keep our social distance to wear our masks, to keep our hands clean, to do all those things that we are told in a word, in instruction to do. But may we not forget as Christians, as believers, that we line up with the word of God and that we have a word that we can speak to this disease and this pandemic. We have a word that we can speak to anxiety and fear and all those other ills that try at times to overtake us. Yeah, we have a word that we can speak. Don't just be hearers, James says in James chapter 1, of the word. When your pastor, your preacher, your teacher, virtually by way of stream, as even tonight we're doing, don't just hear it and shake your head and say amen and send all your nice emojis as you're doing and you should, but line up with it. Come into agreement with it. Yeah, the word, it works. You have to submit to it and let it work in your life. Let it work in your life. That's what the Roman centurion did. Yeah, he was moving in faith and said, Lord, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. I challenge you tonight to speak the word of God over your house, over your children, over your marriage, over your stuff, over your business. And if you don't know what that word is to speak, research it. Look it up. That's what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. No, you don't want to be ashamed not knowing how to approach or to deal with this situation. That's why you got to give yourself to study. The Bible says over in John 5, 39, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And with technology today, no excuse to say, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to begin. I was talking with somebody today, and I, uh, we were talking about uh, the text that I preached from on Sunday. And uh, they were saying, yep, I just finished reading from that text. I'm very familiar. And I asked the person, I said, how many times have you read the Bible? And they said, oh, my God, about eight, nine times over. And that was so impressive whether there are some believers, some Christians have never read the Bible in its entirety.
but we've read other novels, secular novels. We read the newspaper. We read uh, other books, not saying that we shouldn't. But as a Christian, as a son and a daughter of God, as a believer, how can you line up with something that you've never read? How can you line up with something that you only hear preached to you or taught to you on Wednesday and or Sunday or whenever your preacher preaches to you? No, that's not enough. What did Jesus say to Satan who presented himself to Jesus after he had fasted 40 days in the wilderness and said, hey, turn these stones into bread, Satan told Jesus. Jesus said, as it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but he need every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So that means you need to be in the word of God every day. You need to be in the word of God. Why? Because the Bible says in Romans 12 too, uh, we should not be conformed to this world, but transform, change by the renewing, that I-N-G, present participle, continuous, renewing, by the renewing of your mind. So you can prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God, the complete will of God. In addition to believing that this is the season of the open hand in the palm, this is a year of perfection. At ABLM, we've been declaring that this is a year of maturity. My God, COVID has come and shut things down and put us into remote session where we've had to learn how to stand on our own two feet. COVID has caused for some of us to draw closer to Christ. Our prayer life has intensified. Our hunger and our thirst, the word of God and hearing the word of God has intensified. And we say to God, be the glory. But even in the midst of a world that's confused, in the midst of a world and states that are spiking again, and people are filled with fear, I am telling you by grace of the Holy Spirit tonight to line up with the word of God. Because whatever's getting ready to happen in your life, as an arrow to an arrow, from one place to the next place, from one level to the next level, is going to happen according to your faith. The Spirit of the Lord came upon me Sunday, and prophetically I began to aim at different ones that were in the room and speak the word of God over them. And there were those that came back and said, Pastor, thank you for the word. And I want to say to you that the word of God is not just for the moment, but the word of God will accomplish. It will accomplish. But it's only going to accomplish for you as you believe that it will. So we follow the example of this Roman centurion, and we are lining up with the word. And the Bible says that the servant was healed in the self-same hour. My God, I wonder what would happen if you would line up with the word of God and begin to speak his word rather than your fear. Speak his word rather than your stress. Speak his word rather than your doubt. Speak his word rather than what your natural eyes see. Speak his word. What would happen in the self-same hour? What time is it? 7.29 I have. What would happen in the self-same hour? If you would line up with the word and not only say amen to it, but actually line up and walk it out, act it out, move in it, speak it, speak it. Here's some benefits to the word of the Lord. Here's what happened. You find out that according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that the scriptures are inspired by God. It says that all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God, profitable for reproof, for correction. Uh, for rebuke, for instruction. Verse 17 says that the man of God may be uh, perfect and thoroughly furnished. So we have the scriptures that are good for doctrine. They're profitable for doctrine. Uh, the word doctrine means teaching. So the scriptures that we read, though that they are written by men, they were inspired by God. And that word inspired means that God breathed upon them. And they begin to write and record the Holy Spirit breathed upon them and they utter to us as we read in the scripture what God breathed upon them, what God inspired for them to say. And so we have these holy scriptures so that the man of God may be mature, complete. Not only is this the year of perfection as we believe in this season, but it's the year of completion. Yeah, it's the season of completion where God is making you whole 
within first, not without. Because things without are failing. Things without are shaky. Things without are shady. And, and things without are just fickle. But God is making you whole within. It's the year of perfection. It's the year of completion. And guess what? It's the year of redemption. Something is coming back to your hand. Where the enemy tried to come in like a thief that he is. And steal, kill, and destroy. God is going to redeem some things back to your hand. Yes, this is the season of perfection, the season of completion, and the season of redemption. And the scriptures, the word of God is inspired, inspired. The scriptures are inspired by God. How about this one? According to 1 Peter, uh, the word of God is an incorruptible seed. It's an incorruptible seed. It, 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 it's not tainted. It's unadulterated. It's pure. Though a natural man wrote it, it was inspired by God. And so therefore, it's not to be compromised. There is nothing that we take away or add to it. It's of an incorruptible seed. No perversion. No tainting. Pure. Holy. And even completely delivered to us. So that we can have the whole truth. The word of God is an incorruptible seed. And what happens when that seed, like tonight, when it is planted into your spiritual womb as you receive it, then you begin to bring forth of that seed. But you got to get the word of God in your heart. You got to let the word of God get in your spirit. You got to let the word of God get in your soul. So you begin to speak what's on the inside of you. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew 12, out of the abundance of the mouth, well, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what will happen if you allow the word of God to become the seed in your heart? Then you begin to regurgitate and you begin to speak what God says. You begin to look at your marriage and look at your life and look at your children and look at your money. Look at life the way God sees it for you. When you get the seed of his word on the inside of you. Not only that, I'm just exhorting you tonight and running through. Let us see. The word of God is eternal. The word of God is eternal. He says over in Matthew 24, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, my word shall remain forever. Isaiah says the word of the Lord shall stand forever. So this heaven as we know it and this earth as we know it is going to fade. It's going to dissolve. It's going to pass away, but not his word. Yeah, his word, his word will remain forever. These are benefits when you line yourself up with the word of God. The word of God is eternal. The word of God is an incorruptible seed. The word of God is inspired by God himself. It is his love letter to us that we can read, that we can meditate in, that we can saturate ourselves with and become full of it. The word of God will never return void. Prophet Isaiah says in 55 and 11, he says, as the rain falleth, as the rain falleth and not return up, falleth to the earth and it waters and it, and it waters the earth and it, it does what it's supposed to do as it falls to the earth, but it doesn't go back up to heaven without accomplishing on earth what it's supposed to do. He says, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void. It will not come back to me empty, but it will accomplish what I set it to accomplish. It will prosper in the place that I have sent it to prosper. It's the word of God. So when you line it with the word of God and you begin to speak the word of God over your situation, over your life, even over the doctor's report, yeah, as the scripture says, Whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. We know we've received news uh, concerning uh, our health, and we've received news concerning our, our economical status. We've received news concerning our family status. Well, I want to tell you that there's better news that trumps that news, and that news is in the Word of God. I talked about it, I believe it was on last week, that some of us are going through a proving moment where even Jesus had to prove to his disciples in John chapter 6 relative to the miracles of the two fish and the five loaves. He knew when he asked them that they would think there was not enough. 
but it was a proving moment. And even some of you are going through a proving moment. But I challenge you by the grace of God tonight that you would line up with the word of God. Line up with his word. Because his word will not return empty. But his word will prosper. His word will accomplish. So you keep trying to put your hand on it. You keep trying to put your thought to it. You keep trying to get there and be the savior all the time and bail this one out and bail that one out. You have sleepless nights because you're worried about this and you're worried about that. I pull you out of worry tonight and I challenge you to line up with the word of God. Here's a scripture for your worry. The Bible says over in Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. A lot of times we ask God for something. Lord, we ask on Monday, um, heal me. We ask again on Tuesday, heal me, Lord. Wednesday, we're back again, heal me, Lord. When are you going to thank God for healing? Don't be anxious for nothing. Don't be stressed over anything. Don't let fear grip your heart over much of anything. With prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So after you ask God for it, thank him for it. And the Bible says the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Then it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, good, lovely, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Over in 26.3 of Isaiah, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. How can I smile in times like these? I got the peace of God in my heart. I've got the peace of God in my life. I'm no better than you. You're no better than me. But I'm lining myself. I'm doing everything I can to line up with the word of God. And so when I feel uh, those feelings and anxieties and attacks coming upon me, what do I do? I speak the word of God that no weapon formed against me can prosper. And even the tongues that rise up against me in judgment, I don't have time to get even with them. I don't have time to fight back. And let me just tell you something, believers and viewers. It's an angry world that we're living in right now. I know you've heard this term that people are crazy, but let me say it one more time. People are absolutely crazy, insane, out of their mind. And I want to say to you, be saved, act saved, and remain saved. I witnessed today a car trying to get around a dumpster close by where I live and another car is coming out of a garage and of course the car that's coming around the dumpster couldn't see that another car was coming at them and I'm looking and saying this is not going to be good and they sort of came just almost head on and it would have taken one car to move out the way so that the other car could ease by to prevent them from clashing and instead of their cars clashing their interaction clash and their personality clash and they must have went on for about at least a good three minutes arguing car to car these are two females may I mind you if I can just say it that way the one female gets out of the car approaches the other female the other female is saying calling out her address this is where I live. The other female that got out the car is saying, well, I'm out the car. What do you want to do? Because I feel like fighting this morning. Oh, she was very clear in expressing she felt like fighting. And you know, those are words that just rub you the wrong way. It just vexes you. It, 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 it caused you to get all riled up. And I'm saying, Lord, please don't let this other lady get out the car because I need to get by them. And I don't, I, not today, Lord, not today. So I'm praying from where I am that the other lady didn't get out of the car. The other lady's shouting, just go ahead, hit my car. Hit, she's begging to have a car hit, knowing she didn't really want her car to be hit. She had temporary uh, plates, so it looked like it must have been a new car. She didn't really want her car hit. I said all that to say, just sharing with you part of my morning, that people are really angry. People are really crazy. And uh, you, you, you that are saved, you that have the peace of God, don't let anybody take you out of your peace. Don't, don't let anybody rock your boat to the point where you start operating in your flesh and in carnality. 
And eventually the lady got back in her car. She drove off not before throwing a bottle at the other car. And but she already, uh, you understand what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying. Line up with the word of God. When you line up with the word of God, you may come across some crazy people. But there's a peace of God that reminds you of who you are. And that, and that you cannot allow for yourself to stoop to unhealthy levels. To give yourself to unnecessary arguments. Life is too precious. Life is too short. To allow yourself to walk in ways and walk in manners and, and, and just exercise and behave in ways that are not pleasing to God. I said to the Lord today, Lord, let my life be pleasing to you. Let my life be pleasing to you. These two ladies didn't know how crazy they looked going back and forth. Because if they really wanted to cause them, they could have just crashed each other's car. And then they could have just got out the car and crashed each other. But I just paint that picture for you to remind you that, that don't have road rage. Don't get all indignant and all upset. You never know who's in the other car. I know you got crazy in you. And ain't nobody going to bully you. But listen to the word of, the, of your pastor tonight. The words of the prophet tonight. Be saved. Act saved. Remain saved. Let me get back on track. Line up with the word of God. Line up with the word of God. Letter E. The word of God illuminates. It illuminates. What is the psalmist says that the word, uh, thy word uh, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. As the children of Israel, they would travel. At times, they would travel through, as it were, uh, dark regions. And, 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 and sometimes the terrains would, would, would be a bit off. But he says, thy word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. I don't want my feet to go left. I don't want my feet to sway right. I want my feet to walk in a narrow path. I don't want to walk in the broad way where everybody seems to be flocking, the convenient path. I want to walk in the narrow path. And I want your word to be as light to my path so that I can see which way to take. I can see which route to take. So the word of God illuminates. Yeah, even in, in dark places, in dark places, it illuminates. It brightens up where, where, where it is dim in your life. Get in the word of God and see how that your situation will begin to brighten up. God will give you understanding. He will give you wisdom. He will tell you when to speak, when not to speak. Illumination, revelation, understanding. And even your countenance will brighten up. He gives you that peace. He gives you that peace. Letter F, how about the threefold dynamic? The threefold dynamic of the word of God. In Ephesians, or rather Hebrews 4.12, says that the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's quick, it's powerful, and it's sharp. Than any two-edged sword, it pierces between the divine and the sun of your soul and spirit. Some of you don't differentiate between the soul and the spirit, but as human beings made in the image of God, we, we, are, we, are, we are spirit, we are soul, and we have a body, we live in a body. And the word of God gets in between your soul and your spirit. It gets in between your joints and your marrow. It's a discerner of your thoughts, and it knows the intents of your heart. I, I can't tell you how many times uh, in preaching and ministering the word of God that there are those that feel like sometimes I'm aiming right at them I'm speaking right to them because sometimes the word of God will come forth and just penetrate and directly speak to an issue that someone is going through an issue that someone has had that's the word of God it's quick, it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword it, it has a way of getting in between the places where nobody else can get to the psalmist says, search my heart, O oh God. Try me. You know, if there's any wicked way in me, that's what the word of God does. It tries you. Sometimes the word of God is coming forth and it, it encourages you, it uplifts you, it exhorts you. At other times it comes forth and it cuts you. It shows you the error of your way. It shows you where you're wrong. It shows you where you're not right, where you're not thinking right, where you're not behaving right. It shows you when you're not lining up properly where your relationships are not in order your business is out of order the word of God according again 2 Timothy 3 16 is not just profitable just to make you feel good 
It corrects you. It rebukes you. It chastens you. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Not only that, but we understand according to John 6, 63, that words are spirit. Words are spirit. The little rhyme that we learned as children that we used to quote couldn't be further from the truth. Was it sticks and bones? Uh, sticks and stones, there it is. Thank you. May break my bones. Uh, but words can never hurt. That's not true. Words are spirit. In fact, I'd go far to say that there are some of us hurting today because of words that we heard as children. Slanders and uh, sometimes derogatives and being spoken down to and being called out of our name and being humiliated. Words, words of spirit. Jesus says that the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The flesh profit of nothing, but the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. So you've got to be very, very careful the words that come out of your mouth. Because though you can't see them, you cannot retract them, you cannot take them back. But they go forth to accomplish. And we need the word of God to be in our mouth. David says in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. I'm practicing to keep his word in my mouth. I'm practicing every day to not just speak positively. I don't want to just be a positive person. I want to be a godly person. And I want to speak what God is saying out of his word. Mark 11:23 and Proverbs 18:21 talks about the power of confession. Some of you have positive thoughts that you regurgitate. They're on your refrigerator, they're on your mirror in the bathroom. I challenge you to get the word of God and post it in your house. That's what Moses was instructed to tell the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Make sure that they pass this on to their son and their son's son and their son's son's son. And let it be like frontlet between their eyes. Let it, let, it, let it be on their doorposts. Let the ordinances and the statutes and the commandments of God, let them be posted. Because there's power in confession. Mark 11, 23 says uh, at, the, at the latter end, you shall have whatsoever you say. The disciples were so astonished how that they uh, came close to a tree one day and Jesus was hungry and looked at the fig tree and, and it looked like it should have had figs and it didn't have figs. The closer he got to it and could not draw from it and he cursed the tree. They went back another day and saw that the tree was cursed and they were just so amazed. And Jesus says, if you have faith, and no doubt in your heart, you can speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed. And you shall have whatsoever you say. That's why some of us, <laughs> we don't have the things that, that we desire because we won't say what it is we desire. We say everything opposite. We say everything that the news say. We say everything that social media say. We say everything that gossipers are saying. We're saying everything that the naysayers are saying. You've got to change your language. You've got to change your verbiage. Because there is power in confession. The power of confession. Uh, 1821 of Proverbs, uh, death and life, it's not in the hand of the doctor. It's in the power of your tongue. And he that eateth the fruit thereof shall have. So, so there, there is power. There are dynamics that happen when you speak. When you go forth, when you confess, there's the power of confession. Every day you ought to confess, I am healed. Every day you ought to confess, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Every day you ought to confess, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Every day you ought to confess, I'm blessed going in, blessed going out. My children are saved. You ought to get prayers of confession and, and scriptures that will confirm what you're saying and say that only. That's what the Roman centurion said. Just speak the word. You don't have to come where I am. I'll line up with what you say. In fact, I can't leave until you say go. Now that you've told me to go, go my way. My faith, according to my belief, has brought it to pass. And he saw the result because his servant was healed in the self same hour. Lastly, let me submit to you. The words of my mouth, as the psalmist says over in 1914, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. I want the words of my mouth 
to be acceptable in your sight. A lot of times we're trying to find the right words to say to someone that we love, someone that we appreciate, someone that we seek to honor. Well, how about allowing the prayer to be like the psalmist, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be acceptable in his sight? Because as long as we have his approval, all those around us will catch up with it eventually because sometimes we're trying to please people that we'll never be able to please. Line up with the word of God as that I've run down through some of these scriptures that exhorts the word of God. There's another scripture that says, uh, there's one thing that I've exalted above my name, God says, and that's my word. I want to say to you tonight, believer, line up with the word of God. Line up with it as it relates to your home, as it relates to your money, as it relates to your health, as it relates to your relationships. Line up with the word of God and speak the word only. Stop speaking negatively. Spot, stop speaking and thinking demonic thoughts. Line up with the word of God. We've done everything we could to adhere to CDC. What about the B-I-B-L-E? What about the Bible? the basic instruction before leaving earth. We've become so in tune and so engrossed with social media, with reading and news. That, but what about the word of God? Line up with the word of God. Arrow to arrow, God is taking you from one glory to the next. But you got to line up with that word. Nothing happens until you believe. Nothing happens until you believe. And in Romans chapter 10, we find out that faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for the exhortation and the discussion and through your word, the scriptures that we've uh, communicated tonight to support this thought and even the principal text. Let us take a lesson from the Roman centurion and not send you anywhere but say that you are God and we honor you for being who you are. We trust you for being who you are. You can stay right where you are, Lord. We will send your word. We will speak your word. We will bear your word. We will communicate your word. And we thank you for good results. Ah, we thank you for miracles. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the word of the Lord accomplishing in our lives, in our children's life, in our community, in our society, all that it should. All that it should. Thank you for these that have watched. I declare they are blessed because of your word. Now let them take your word and hide it in their heart. That they might not sin against you. That they might speak your word only and be blessed by it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And thank God. Clap your hands at home, wherever you are, and thank God for the word of the Lord. Thank God, thank God. Line up with the word of God with the word of God. Thank you for those of you that have signed in, uh, those of you that uh, text me, let me know you're watching, and even those of you that have fellowship across the screen, uh, to your brothers and your sisters, uh, saluting them tonight. If you've not done that, do that. Let somebody know that you're watching, let somebody know that you see them, and you are encouraged, and uh, don't forget, line up with the word of God. Line up with the word of God. Sign of the Lord tonight, and I'll give you. Those of you that have a tithe, pay your tithe. Those of you that have an offering, give an offering. Even a special seed if you have it. Even if a special seed, special seed that you have. Give it. Give it. Give it. You be obedient to God. I talked about it on last week. You be obedient to God. Somebody again came just, just another week. Came again. Pastor, I've got to be obedient. Sold. A week ago, sold a thousand. Came back, sold a thousand. Got to be obedient to God. That's what happened when you line up with the word of God. He will speak to you. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will direct you. The question is, will you follow? Will you be obedient? Many of you have already paid your tithe, and uh, the house of the Lord is blessed by it. Why are you doing that? Because you're lining up with the word of God. It tells us to bring our tithe and our offering. And there are many of you that are watching. You just tune me out at this point. You can't line up with the word that's convenient the word that you select, the word that you like, the word that you prefer, all of the word of God is true. And so giving is a part of worship. So as we line up with the word of God, we present our tithe, which is the 
first hymn. The first hymn is holy before the Lord. Not holy to your mortgage. Not holy to your car, no. It's holy unto the Lord. And then we give him an offering. We give him an offering to say, Lord, I thank you. I appreciate you for being so good. And then we sow seed that determines our harvest. A lot of times you're aspiring to live life on the level of others that you've seen live life. The only difference between you and them sometimes is that they've lined themselves up with the word of God. And at times, others are not willing to pay the price. But God has a way of causing his work to accomplish. I want to salute and encourage all of you that have been faithful in your giving, faithful in watching, faithful in sharing, faithful uh, to the Lord before or amid, I should say, this pandemic. You have been a blessing to the house of God. And get this, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. The Lord is not unrighteous. He will not forget. He knows the labor of love. He knows your faithfulness. He knows your heart. I've got one mother that sold directly into my life. Sometimes it's $5. Sometimes it's 10 Sometimes it's 20 Sometimes it's 25 It is what it is. But I believe it's out of a pure heart. And so sometimes it's not always, again, the... the uh, amount, whether it's large or small, it's the heart that we give, the heart that we give from. Let our, let our heart be pure. Let our heart be honest before God. And so give tonight. Give tonight as a cheerful giver. Give with a smile, as I say. Not like this is your last to give. Let all the people give unto the Lord as our information is there on the screen. Methods uh, of giving is there. And thank you again for those of you that have sown directly into my life. Thank you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Do we have that flyer that I was trying to get up last week in, in the way of an announcement? We do? Let's see if we can pull it up. I was trying to make an announcement that would be helpful to those that uh, can be helped in this way relative to rental assistance. On last week, I made mention to it as one of our team members from the Better Life Culture Connection, our resource team here at the church, had forwarded to me, and I wanted to just make sure for our members and for our viewers and friends of the ministry that at least you can see it, that you would know, good, relative, it's up. Thank you so very much relative to the assistance that uh, uh, is lent to those that need it, that can use it. Uh, that flyer is there. I, I hope that you can glean from its information and take advantage. I believe there's a deadline of July 17th, which uh, is Friday. So if you're going to move, move swiftly and see if that can bless you and help you and even others if you're able to share and pass on the information. All right? Until Sunday, we believe here at a better life ministry, that the key to life is a better life. Go in God's peace until Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Those of you that are coming to church, pre-register. Do it right now tonight. There's a cutoff by tomorrow night, 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. So register if you're coming, and we hope to see you real soon in Jesus' name. God bless you.